Today we're going to be ranking the Pokemon in BDSP VGC. I'm going to turn this into a video. Um, but something to note is obviously BDSP VGC is unofficial, but we're not going to call it some really convoluted name like BDSP doubles, but it's popular with VGC players because you use the same rules. Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So here's how I'm separating the tiers. So when I say S, it means it's always good. It's going to be phenomenal on pretty much every team. When I it, it's like the best in its in its area Pokemon. So like the best Trick Room setter, hands down, would be an S tier. However, like the you know like how do I say it? If a Pokemon is like the very best at its role, nothing even stands a chance against it. You should be using this Pokemon for that specific role. It's probably going to be an S. However, there are certain Pokemon that are the best at their role that don't quite meet that criteria of, hey, I shouldn't really use anything else, you know? So those would be like in higher tiers. A is like top tier. It means that it's going to be very, very good. It's extremely reliable and you're going to be able to use it like 99% of the time um, and not have any issues. So, you know, just reliable, strong, good Pokemon. B is high tier. It's just a slightly less reliable version of A tier. Like, you, you're you gonna see it, you're gonna use it, but it's not quite as common and strong. C is mid tier, and that's just like, hey, things are getting kind of shaky in terms of viability. However, yeah, you know, you could reliably use it if you build the correct team around it. D is low tier, it's basically like, yeah, I suppose you could use it, but it's not worth the effort. <laughs> and F is just, yeah, don't. It's it's probably not going to work. It's going to take way, way, way too much effort to do that. So we have Electrode. Electrode is actually really interesting because it's got one of the highest speed tiers in the entire game. It's like just barely slower than... Um, like if I separate by speed, it's going to be like second. Oh, wait. Let me uh, go to BDSP VGC. <clears throat> so in terms of speed it's second fastest however it's like not terribly strong it's got 50 attacks 80 special attack and it's extremely frail and it's not at the power that Regieleki was at because it doesn't have the ability like yeah I suppose you could oh it doesn't even get electroweb does it yeah it doesn't get electroweb this thing is really only going to be somewhat viable as like I guess you could specs it, um, but I don't think it's worth the effort. There aren't that many great Electro types in this game. It's like Zapdos and Raichu and a couple others. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in like F tier. I, I don't see it being a thing. Like the speed could be a thing that could like make or break it, but the speed, despite how high it is, isn't at the point where it's gonna like still outspeed things when they set up Tailwind. It's not like Regieleki. Executor, I think Executor is a D tier. Uh, Grass Psychic isn't a great typing, especially when you want to be bulky like this thing. Um, it's probably just good for like Trick Room. However, actually, you know, I might put it in C tier. The main reason is it can do a couple of things, and I remember messing with this a while ago. So Executor has Chlorophyll, but it's also a Trick Room user. So something that you could do is actually run like Trick Room Sleep Powder and use that as like, you know, hey, I'm slow and I'm going for Sleep Powder, I have a good special attack stat, I'm kind of scary. Ooh, Giga Drain, ooh, Psychic, like, you know, scary stuff like that. However, you could still run Chlorophyll over Harvest and run like, <laughs> this is kind of like weird, but if you ran like a Torkoal next to it, you could actually like bait the opponent into thinking, oh, he's gonna go for Trick Room. And then you set up, you know, the Torkoal, set up the sun and all of a sudden, you know, you can still be a Trick Room Pokemon, but if you hit, like, a speed tier... I don't know. What, what's a good speed tier for this game? Let me find that speed tier real quick. Pretty much the fastest thing we're going to see is 130, so it would be, like, 101, since, you know, that would outspeed at that point. Um, you'd still be, like, a relatively slow Pokemon at 101 speed, and, like, be able to take advantage of Trick Room, but you could, like, have the option to be a fast Pokemon that like, you know, does damage and put things to sleep with chlorophyll. It's it's a weird flexible Pokemon, so I want to put it at C. It could be used reliably if you really wanted to, if you built around it, um, but it's not like anywhere close to B or A tier. It's like the very bottom of C tier. Hmm. Marowak makes me sad. So, you know, we have a pretty limited selection of ground types in this game. 
you know, there's there's a good amount. It's it's not like a, an amount that we're super concerned about uh, how little we have. It's not like bug types, um, but it just gets outclassed by everything. Yeah, you could run like a lightning rod set with thick club, but I don't know. It's it's not at the level that a Lola Marowak was at because a Lola Marowak had much better stabs. It was able to take advantage of so much more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put him in D tier. He's not quite F, because you know you could still you could still use him for sure. You know, thick club is broken, but it's not reliable. It doesn't get good stab beyond like bone meringue. Like bone meringue's great, earthquake's great, but like if you're clicking, I don't know. It, like it's coverage. It's coverage is the issue. Yeah, because if we go by like where is it? Uh, category physical. This is what you're getting. It's, you know, in like rock, steel, and ground, like, you know, together they're fine, but you're not hitting that much, and it's just gonna be, it, you know, it's gonna be like nay on with Togekiss because Togekiss hits so hard and its special bulk is kinda eh. I don't know. There are a lot of Pokemon that really mess this thing up, especially Milotic. Uh, Hitmonlee, I wanna put it in D tier along with Hitmonchan. Like, they're just fake out Pokemon. That's really it. Like the Hitmon family, there's only one good Hitmon and it's Hitmon top. Like these two, they're fine. You could use them, but they're definitely like, you're gonna have to work hard to get them to work. Like they're just gonna fake out and die. So you might as well run like Smeargle. But yeah, um, Ormanan based. Uh, sun is ass until home compatibility. That's true, that's true. Uh, unburden Hitmon. Yeah, I know it gets like unburdened, but I don't know. There are better fighting types. Like, if you want a fighting type, he's right there. Other fighting types, like... Hariyama's amazing. Brilum's amazing. Infernape's pretty good. Lucario's pretty good. Like, it has so much competition. It's it's hard to justify using a Hitmon when there's so many other fighting types that get fake out, you know? Weezing? This is gonna be a controversial opinion, but I think Weezing is high tier. And can I... American Airlines, please. There's like an invisible ad because I have ad blockers on. Um, and I keep clicking on it. Weezing's definitely high tier. And that's that's for sure a hot take. But a lot of people don't realize that Weezing kept its ability from Gen 8 being neutralizing gas. Being neutralizing gas. There we go. And if we actually take a look at um, Picolytics. If we take a look at Picolytics and go to Diamond and Pearl Usage. Like, Crit Kiss is something that relies on its ability to be extremely viable. Tyranitar relies on its ability. Rotom Watch relies on its ability. Breloom, not so much. Arcanine, Hitmontop, Azumarill. All of these, like, top-tier Pokemon, they heavily rely on their abilities. And being able to turn that off and enable other Pokemon, like Slacking or Regigigas, is actually really valuable. On top of that, Weezing gets really cool moves. It gets Will-O-Wisp, it gets Taunt. And it's really rare to see, like, a good Poison type. So... I think I think Weezing is like B, if not very, very low A, uh, very, very low A, like, I don't know. As you can see, my throat's drying out, so I might need to take a break to get water really quick. Um, but let's cover a couple more before I do that. I forgot Evil I was gone. Uh, Chansey is also going to be... I'm gonna say F tier, like, you don't use Chansey when you have Blissey. Like, at this point, it gets straight up outclassed. Um, Tangela also gets put into F tier. I... You need Eviolite to be good. All the Eviolite Pokemon just gets sent straight to F. That's funny. Kangaskhan? I actually think Kangaskhan's actually going to be like B tier. Kangaskhan's crazy right now. I've been using Kangaskhan recently. It gets a lot of really cool tools. Um, mainly the buffed inner focus is really nice because you don't take Intimidate anymore. So if you go to Kangaskhan, right? Uh, this is a set that I've been running that's really, really funny. This is my current Funny Man Marco set. This is just, like, anti smeargle to the highest extent. Uh, it's got a really good speed tier at 90, obviously. Uh, it has a decent attack stat at 95, and it's got really good bulk at 105, 80, 80. You don't get flinched, you don't get intimidated, and you can outspeed smeargle and set up a safeguard, meaning that it can't spore your entire team. I think that's really nice. And double edge a stab, given, like, the lower power level of the game as a whole, like, it's it hits like a truck, like, I'm two-shotting things. Like, I think this is actually a really nice Pokemon. Um, it does get other tools, like, obviously, you can run, like, Roar if you want to stop, like, Trick Room. Um, you can run Last Resort Cheese if you really wanted to, but I just think, like, Silk Scarf Double Edge is fine. 
You could also swap out the silk scarf for like, I don't know, like a citrus berry or a, a lum berry or something, but overall, I just think it's really nice. The battle is oldest time, Smeargle versus Kangaskhan. Dude, shout out 2016, Smeargle versus Kangaskhan. Uh, sea King, that's that's gonna be an F tier. It's it's gonna take too much effort. Um, Starmie, some of these Pokemon, I'm just gonna kind of skim through because it's like there's not much to talk about. Starmie is like a usable special attacker. It's got pretty good special attack, and it's you know not terrible on the bulk side. You know, it's got 85 in its defenses and 60 HP. It's also really fast. I could see Starmie maybe being like C tier, but it's really just gonna be like used for offensive Scald Ice Beam coverage. It does outspeed Garchomp, which is pretty big. Maybe, um, like, a Life Orb set will be pretty nice. Uh, Analytic also wouldn't be terrible. However, you are pretty fast, but it's not like you're going to be running Illuminate or Natural Cure. So, yeah, I mean, it's got decent coverage. Actually, I might... I'm going to put it C tier. I think I, I don't think it's as bad as other Pokemon. I think it's definitely, like, C tier. Mr. Mime. Um, this is an interesting one. Because Mr. Mime will always have its weird niche in its decent speed and access to um, access to screens and stuff. Filter is also not terrible for like a light clay set because it gives it a little bit more longevity. If you're going to use Mr. Mime, it's pretty much always going to be like fake out. Um, I feel like it gets like a sleep move, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I'm thinking of Jinx. Um, yeah, it's, it's usually just going to be like fake out screens, Trick Room. Like Trick Room is also a thing it can run. But like usually it's like light screen reflect. It, this is like bootleg Grim Snarl, objectively worse Grim Snarl. But um, I don't know. Like I, I think Mr. Mime's gonna go into like C tier at, at highest. It might even be D tier. Um, you know what? I can. There have been so many times I got absolutely schmooved on by a Mr. Mime. I have to respect it at C. Yeah, it's bootleg Smeargle. So many things get outclassed by Smeargle. It's really funny. Scyther. Scyther isn't terrible. We could be using it. No, if you're going to use it to beat Cresselia, you might as well use, like, Scissor. So, I'm going to put it D tier. You know, Swords Dance stuff is fine. You know, Technician Wing Attack, it's fine. This one, this one's going C tier. I've gotten annihilated by Jinx before with Sweet Kiss, Fake Out, Trick Room stuff. Like, it's, 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 I will say Jinx isn't the best Pokemon, but it's definitely, like, good. It's weirdly good, and it's always used by people that you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not gonna lose to them. And then you do, and you're like, I've lost to Jinx so many times, I have to respect it now. At least that's how I am, you know? Something that you're gonna notice is this, this tier list is gonna be heavily skewed towards B and C, and then at F. It's, it's gonna, like, peak at those two areas. Pinsir, that's definitely a C. Um, there are very few Pokemon we have to beat Cresselia, and I honestly think that like Choice Band, Hyper Cutter, Pinsir might be a decent way of beating it. It's not the best, but if you really want to break her, you could have worse Pokemon in that position. Uh, and it's also just a generally okay Pokemon. You could run like a Moxie set, um, and like just you know get an attack boost every time you get a KO. But it, it's it's usable. Oros. I mean, it's an Intimidate user. It's an Intimidate user, and it's got okay speed and attack. I want to say C, but it's probably more like D. Intimidate definitely brings it up, but it, it doesn't have the bulk to back it up. I'm going to say D. Butterfree, uh, that's a C. Per purely by virtue of Compound Eye Sleep Powder. And it's actually got like a decent speed stat. 70 isn't, you know, bad. Um, I actually think it's really funny. Like Butterfree and <laughs> Butterfree and uh, Breloom, like it's like, hey, I'm a 70 base power accurate sleep user. Hey, me too. I'm just better. So I don't know. Like this thing also gets like Quiver Dance, right? So you could do that. But it's my it's mainly just gonna be sleep powder spam. So into C it goes. Gyarados, uh, that one's gonna be. I I think Gyarados is gonna be a tier. I think we're gonna see more Gyarados as the format goes on. Um. Where is it right now in usage? It's got to be high. Yeah, it's 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 up there. Gyarados is really nice. Uh, it lost access to a reliable uh, flying stab in Max Air Stream since Dynamax isn't in this game. But it's still like a good Dragon Dance user. It's a great Lumberry Pokemon. Uh, Waterfall, Earthquake. There are a lot of things that it gets. It lost Power Whip, but it 
it never really needed power up to be good. The only difference now is that water types take like three more hits from it. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's 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 pretty cool, you know. Anyways, uh, it, it's too weak to Rotom Wash. Lost Airstream AV. Yeah, it. That's the thing. Like, it might be weaker to Rotom Wash, but when you see a Gyarados, like when you use a Gyarados, you're fully expecting it to face a Rotom Wash, which is why when we look at Gyarados, oh hey, look at that. We have plenty of options. Also, this this early usage stats, it's it's not very accurate. I just noticed that because why is Granbull up here? <laughs> but yeah, you use it like with. Raichu most of the time because you have like fake out dragon dance you have lightning rod when you play Gyarados you play expecting it to have to face a Rotom so yeah uh Lapras Lapras is sad because if this were Dynamax I would put it like here or here but it's not so it's more like I'm gonna say C um there aren't a lot of breakers in this format. There are a lot of good fighting types. There are a lot of good fighting types. But there also aren't very many good ice types. So I think Lapras belongs in C just by virtue of it's bulky. It's got access to water and ice stab. And it has access to like Pear Song and Sing and other weird tech. So I think C is about where it belongs. Ditto is always going to be Ditto. I, I think Ditto only really works in restricted formats. It's it's going to be D. Like, I, I really only see it being D. Because there are, in, in restricted formats, there's like a giant powerful tool that's an obvious target for Ditto. But in, in non-restricted, it's like, when are you going to bring it? What Pokemon do you want to copy with Ditto? Like, okay, cool, I took my opponent's Garchomp. It's worse, but, you know, it's... It's fine. It's it's just a worse Garchomp. You know, just run just run the Pokemon you want to use. <laughs> There's a lot of setup in this format, though. Yeah, there is a lot of setup, but most of that setup is like literally just like a single sword stance from a Garchomp or a bunch of Calm Minds from Cresselia. And Ditto's low HP means that it doesn't take full advantage of anything Cresselia sets up. It's it's very eh, you know, like you're not gonna bring it to most games. Um Vaporeon, I, I'm going to say D, it's it's just a bulky water, it doesn't get many tools that other waters get, you know. Jolteon, it's a relatively okay electric type, like it's it's good, you know, it's got good speed, it's 130, so it's able to actually outspeed things like Zapdos, and that's really all it's got to it, um, you know, you can run like Volt Switch, you can run Thunderbolt. It's got yawn, I suppose. It's got you know other cool tools. Yeah, I'm, I think I think C is about where it belongs. You know, Flareon. I, I'm gonna say D. I, Flareon's got a nasty attack stat. It's got 130 and it's got Flare Blitz. It takes a lot of setup to get Flareon going. Uh, you need Trick Room. You need to have made sure you're not gonna get intimidated, and you probably need a Guts Boost for Flare Blitz to do a lot. But you know, it's it's about the same situation as Marowak. It's Intimidate food, it hits hard, but it doesn't get good coverage. Anyways, Amistar, let's say D. It's like a very, very mid water type. It, it, not even mid, it's like low. Like you only really do like Shell Smash. All it really has going for it is like uh, Shell Smash Surf. Yeah. Does it get Muddy Water? It does get muddy water. I could see that being a thing. Um, probably gonna want want to run like swift swim. Maybe weak armor actually wouldn't be bad, but yeah, this is like the only set I see it running. <clears throat> yeah, there are quite a there are quite a few Pokemon we have to rank. Kabutops. I'm gonna say C. I actually think it's somewhat good as a um as a swift swim user. It's okay, you know, like you'll you'll get away with it. Aerodactyl. Uh, does it get Tailwind? That's the only deciding factor here. That is literally the only deciding factor. It does. Okay. Into C you go. If Aerodactyl didn't get Tailwind, it would be like D or F, honestly. Snorlax? I think Snorlax is high tier. Um, it still has access to Belly Drum and stuff, so when you're running Snorlax, it's pretty much always going to be either like Curse Leftovers or literally just like Belly Drum, Body Slam... Um, 
It lost good ground coverage, actually. No, it still gets high horsepower. That's good. So, like, yeah, belly drum, body slam, high horsepower. Does it get recycle? It does. However, it probably won't use it. I'm just going to, like, run that. Um, and then either, like, a third move or protect or something, you know. You could you could run more coverage, though, I suppose. Articuno. <laughs> D tier. And the only reason you're not F is because you might be able to check Garchomp once in a while. That's pretty much it. Zapdos. Um, I think Zapdos, I want to put it in A tier, but it lost a lot of tools. I, I might actually put it in A tier. Like, here's the thing with Zapdos, right? It definitely needed, like, it, it needed Heat Wave to be really, really good. It's still, like, fine, right? Like, you run the standard, like, Discharge, Thunderbolt stuff. It's main partner's Garchomp for Disquake shenanigans. It lost so much, though. Like, you, you don't have tools that you need to be super, super good. So I think B is as high as I'm going to put it. Uh, gotta go to class. Have a great day. Have a nice have a nice day, Goth Fungus. I think Moltres is actually about as viable, and that's kind of a hot take. Here's the reason. I think Rain is going to be pretty good in this format. And when you're running Rain, you want to have a fire type to make sure that you can check grass types a little bit easier. And Moltres, you know, there's no Ferrothorn, obviously. However, you can still run a fire type on your Rain team. And this is the only one of, like, legendary birds that wants to click Hurricane. So, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's about as viable. Sorry, I had to cough. <clears throat> Dragonite, B tier. It got inner focus, or it got the buffed inner focus. It's got multi-scale. It's just going to do Dragonite things. Meganium... It's just going to leech seed stall. Uh, like I said, there aren't many breakers, so maybe like C tier, but I'm going to put it in D tier to be safe. Meganium's never been that great. Typhlosion, um, Scarf Eruption's always going to be pretty good. So, CJ, how you doing, man? How are you today? You got work? Uh, Beedrill, that's F. Like, that's just straight up F. Mewtwo, okay, S tier, you're not, vi you're, you're not allowed, but... Uh, for Alligator, I actually, <sighs> for Alligator gets, like, Sheer Force, right? Yeah, Sheer Force Torrent. It's, I guess you could run, like, Dragon Dance, right? Does it get Swords Dance? It does get Swords Dance. I could see for Alligator being pretty good. I mean, Sheer Force Waterfall hits, like, a truck. The only thing is, it's, like, it's, once again, it's, a, it's, like, there are, there are too many good water type syndrome. Like, it's got competition with the zoom roll, and it's just, eh. Um, all of these guys are just going straight into F. I don't even think I need to justify it. They just don't do anything well. If you want to figure it out, be my guest. I'm always a big fan of people using their favorites. Crobat, that, I honestly think Crobat has potential to be top tier. Um, but I'm, I'm going to put him in high tier right now. And the main reason is Crobat like literally is some of the most reliable tailwind that you can get in the game uh can't be faked out you have taunts you have access to inner focus so you don't get intimidated which means you can run physical poison stab now so that's that's pretty good like i think crobat's actually really really good in the format lantern it's d you know it's not the best electric not the best water there's no evil light so you're f <laughs> zatu you're f you I mean, I, I suppose it could hit pretty hard, but it's it's not hitting as hard as you want it to, and it, it's not bulky, so. Ampharos, I actually, you know, I haven't looked at Ampharos in a long time. I actually don't even know if it has, like, terrible stats. Let me, let me take a look at that. All right, it's got static as the ability, so that's not great. It's, it's pretty bulky, you know, it's, actually, this isn't terrible. This isn't, like, a bad Pokemon. Why did I think this was like a bad Pokemon? This does it just like lack coverage? Because yeah, you run Thunderbolt. It probably still gets Dragon Pulse, but you don't want to run Dragon Coverage. It's kind of useless. Um, yeah, it's it's like a matter of coverage. Like it only gets Electric moves and like Cotton Guard. It's like what would you do? You'd run like Leftovers, Cotton Guard, Thunderbolt, Protect, Power Gem, I suppose. Um, it definitely doesn't like. Actually, this isn't terrible against Tokus. It doesn't like Garchomp, though. It really doesn't. Um, 
I'm going to put it in D. I don't think it's the worst of D. If I were ranking them within tiers, it would be like top of D. But it's it's like just barely D. It's weird. Huh. That's an interesting Pokemon. Um, This thing gets Sleep Powder, right? Blossom's actually surprisingly good. It gets Strength Sap. Uh, it gets Sleep Powder. Uh, yeah, and like just by virtue of that. The, the, by, by virtue of tools and it's like pretty good bulk this thing's like easily c tier azumarill that's a top tier 100 percent top tier tell me you can't lie to me no one on earth who plays pokemon has never been swept by a belly drum azumarill this thing goes crazy like i i love this thing It's got a great matchup versus Garchomp. It's got enough bulk to take hits from Crit Kiss. Um, there aren't a lot of great electric types in the format. It honestly can definitely take a hit from Venusaur. So it's, it's you know, it's got everything it needs. It's also a great Trick Room Pokemon. Uh, yeah, it's 100% A tier. Sudorudo's F, Politoed. It's Drizzle, um, but Pelipper is clearly better. This thing lost ass, uh, I can't speak. This thing lost access to so many important tools. Um, I don't think it gets Icy Wind, right? Not anymore. It lost Helping Hand. It lost a couple of things. Um, yeah, it doesn't get Icy Wind anymore. It's... By virtue of having Drizzle, it's it's B tier, right? By virtue of, like, Parish Song, Protect stuff, it's, it's B tier. But if I had to rank it compared to Pelipper, it'd be, like, C tier. Like, I, I don't see this thing ever being used over Pelipper in any case other than you want Parish Song. Jumpluff, honestly, C tier. Jumpluff is easily C tier in my opinion. Uh, it's very slept on. This thing has access to chlorophyll, so under sun it's pretty fast. It has infiltrator, so you know behind a sub it can put you to sleep. But it's an access to sleep powder. I believe it gets strength up. It does. It it's a bulky, fast grass flying type, which is interesting, right? I think this thing has a lot of potential to be explored in the format. Now that it has strength up, it could actually be like an actually decent Garchomp check, because you probably hard wall it. I honestly think you hard wall Garchomp. Yeah, this thing, this thing's got potential. That's that's an that's an easy C tier. Next up, uh Pidgeot F tier. Doesn't do anything better than anything else. This thing's F tier. Quagsire, I want to put it in F tier, but it's just D tier. It's bulky enough to make it work, you know. Espeon is a D. Uh it can hit decently hard and it's pretty fast. Umbreon, I I want to put it in C, but something tells me it might be B. Um, this format definitely appreciates Umbreon for like foul play, snarl, uh, yawn. Like it, it has a lot of tools. It has everything it needs to succeed. It's got leftovers. There are no breakers in the format. Does it have moonlight? Yeah. I there are no breakers. This thing's high tier. This thing's one hundred percent high tier. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it, and it hard walls Crest. That's that's another thing. If you want to beat Crest, KO everything around it, and then throw in your Umbreon, and then they'll have to forfeit. Unknown, that's very clearly F. We need to make a new tier for Unknown. Uh, Slow King, I think it's C. You can set up Trick Room and stuff. Wobbuffet, that is F. 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 So many L's and F's. F. You guys just don't do anything well. Fortress, it's a singles mod. It's going to do great singles, but here it's like, eh. Uh, Steelix? I want to say F, but D. It lost access to Body Press, right? But Steelix is fine. It's still a fine Pokemon. But yeah, uh, that's, eh. Raticate, I'm sorry, I love rats, but F. Uh, Grand Bull is definitely D. I think Grand Bull has potential to be C. It hits really hard, guys. Like, it, it's really, really powerful on that front it, it's got great coverage too if you've never seen gramble's coverage it is scary you run intimidate you put a choice ban on this thing run it like a trick room team play rough close combat crunch it's got insane coverage it's got earthquake it's got fire fang this thing hits hard it's got 120 base attack and it's a fairy type dude you don't want to take a choice ban play rough from this thing in any situation it's good it's just not reliable i'm gonna i'm gonna put it c tier that's like a controversial opinion but i think it's it's fine uh, Quillfish, Intimidate, is it bulky? It's got like 60 HP, right? I know obscure Pokemon stats, Quillfish's HP is either 55 or 60. 
It's 65. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, it's it's like it's an intimidator, but it's not great. It's it's D tier. Scizor, I'm gonna put that high tier. Um, it lost access to Bug Bite, and Technician Bug Bite is much stronger than X Scissor. It's getting usage as like just Sword Stance, Bullet Punch, X Scissor shenanigans, but it's it's not the best. I think it's pretty good though. Uh, Shuckle. It's C tier exclusively for usage next to Chansey or Blissey. That's that's literally it. It's C tier exclusively because of a Blissey. So yeah. Heracross, uh, I'm gonna say C tier. It's it's a pretty good breaker. You know, it's it's a good Pokemon. It's not top tier though. Uh, this thing D tier. There's no reason not to use uh, Weavile. Actually, there is Inner Focus, right? Doesn't Weavile lose Inner Focus? I suppose you can make it a case for it in C tier. Yeah, I'll put it C tier. It actually might be better than Weavile. <laughs> it, it could be better than Weavile. Ursa Ring's like F, like it doesn't do anything. Mag Cargo, I actually see potential for Mag Cargo. Um, once Garchomp is off the field, Mag Cargo, like there's very few Pokemon in this format that straight up beat Mag Cargo beyond if you can deal with a Water type and Garchomp, it gets a lot easier. Uh, it's also really bulky. I've been experimenting with it. Hard Walls Togekiss. Togekiss cannot beat Mag Cargo. Uh, Cresselia obviously could. Tyranitar hits pretty hard, but Mag Cargo's got really good physical defense. Flame Body, Will O Wisp. Scissor gets walled. Um, Heatran needs Earth Power to beat it. Reloom doesn't break it with a fighting move. Arcanine beats it. It's it's weird. It's it's D tier, obviously, but it's it's not as bad as you think it is. Like I've been messing with it. Pyloswine, uh, F tier because no Eviolite. Corsola, F tier because bad. This thing is fun. D tier is kind of like fun at times. You can just run Sniper, Scope Lens, and it actually hits pretty hard. It's got really good coverage. Uh, back in Series 7 when Registeel was a thing, I was like, dude, you have broken me, Registeel. I don't want to deal with you. And I started running Sniper Octillery to beat it. Uh, Deadly Birds F tier. Mantine. D tier, it's just a Swift Swim user. It gets a couple of cool tools. It gets Tailwind, I believe. It might be a tutor, though. Let me double check. Yeah, it does get Tailwind. That's good. Skarmory. Uh, D. You know, it's budget Corviknight at this point. Houndoom. D. Uh, Firo F. Kingdra. I think Kingdra's got, got sauce, honestly. Um, I think it's high tier. If you're running Kingdra, it, it gets a couple of things over Ludicolo, mainly Draco Meteor and Muddy Water. Ludicolo lost access to Muddy Water, which is an absolute shame. If Ludicolo had Muddy Water, it'd be absolutely insane. It's still kind of insane because uh, of Fake Out, Giga Drain, Ice Beam stuff, but Kingdra and Ludicolo, they're, it's kind of a hard distinction to make when you're trying to pick one for a team. Dawnfan, uh, that's F. It just doesn't do anything. It really doesn't. That's a shame. I love Donphan. I love Donphan so much. Porygon 2. You've lost Eviolite, but you're still like D tier. If you're going to run Porygon 2, it needs Eviolite, but like without it, it's it's still okay. Well, actually, it's bad, but you can still use it, you know? Uh, Stantler's F. Smeargle? Okay. The moment you've all been waiting for. Is it S or is it A? Is it S or is it A? I'm going to say A, and here's why. Uh, Smeargle is a very iffy Pokemon at times. You live and die by Moody. If you get bad Moody boosts, like if you get an attack boost or a special attack boost, and you drop speed, it's it's gone. It's gone. Like, yeah, it has Spore, yeah, it has Fake Out. It's it's very linear. I talked about this on the Route 1 podcast. Um, it's, it's a very linear Pokemon. You know exactly what it's going to do. The best Smeargle is a Smeargle that someone doesn't know what it does, but we always know what it does. It's Fake Out, it's Follow Me, it's Spore, it's some other third move, whatever you decide you want to run on there. Your Flex move is really the only thing you have over people when it comes to like information. But the last move is typically like Spiky Shield, so you typically know all four moves. It's an amazing Pokemon. It's really annoying to face. Moody is busted at times, but it can also really screw you over. That's why it's not S. It's, it's just A because Moody is just kind of, it'll mess you up, you know? 
And yeah, and it's prone to dying. It does like two things. And if, if your Smeargle survives two turns, it's a miracle, in my opinion. Like that, that's just how it is. Yep, on top, uh, I'm gonna say high tier. I think I think it's high tier. Crit Kiss is really annoying, but this thing does great against Garchomp. Um, does great against Tyranitar. It's a great Intimidator. Gets Wide Guard, Fake Out, a lot of cool tools. It's it's definitely high tier. All right. Uh, Mill Tank F. This thing's D. It needs Shuckle to survive though. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 D. Uh, Raikou, Raikou's interesting. It, it's really interesting. I think it's one of the better electric types in the format. Um, does it still get Snarl? Yeah. So like Volt Switch, Snarl, Thunderbolt. If I could type Thunderbolt, uh, I believe that's it for Courage. It gets like Shadow Ball. It lost Scald, which is kind of annoying. But it hits decently hard, you know, 115, 115. You can't be faked out because uh, of Inner Focus. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in... Do I want to put it in, in high tier? I think I want to put it in high tier because there are so few good Electro types. Yeah, I'm going to put it in high tier. Entei? Yeah, that's high tier, 100%. Entei goes crazy. Inner Focus Flare Blitz, Inner Focus Sacred Fire. Choice Bandit, can't be faked out, can't be intimidated. It's great. It's always going to be good. It still has Scald, does it? Oh, it does. Oh, okay, yeah, that's high tier. Suicune. Um, actually, I want to say Suicune's top tier. It's reliable Tailwind, Scald, Calm Mind. It's, it's, it's got everything it needs. It's, it's very hard to break. This format's going to be very bulky. I'm just going to warn you guys immediately. Tyranitar, that is top tier, in my opinion. Um... It's Tyranitar. It's always going to be top tier in VGC unless it's a restricted format. Yeah, it just it just puts in the work. Um, Sand is great. Uh, it's one of the few breakers for Cresselia that can reliably beat it. It's great against Togekiss unless you get crit on Dazzling Gleam, but if you don't, you easily tank it and one-shot it back. So yeah, uh, I think it's a great Pokemon. Lugia is not legal. Arbok is F. Uh, Sceptile? It's got Unburdened stuff. It's got like... Grass Knot, I believe. Um, it's probably like D or C. There are better grass types. There are better grass types, but I'm gonna I'm gonna specify here. If you try, could be used reliably. If you try, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that there. That's because that's what Subtile is. Um, Blaziken. I'm gonna. It's it's C. It's very C. Uh, there's no Bisharp. Blaze Bish would have been crazy in this format. Pikachu, Light Ball kind of goes nuts. Uh, I'm gonna, Pikachu is unironically C tier. <laughs> Light Ball goes crazy. Swampert, another C tier. Uh, Mightyena, that's F. Linoon. Belly Drum stuff's kind of funny, but it's, it's definitely D. Uh, it's not bulky enough to reliably Belly Drum like, like Azumarill's able to, but if you do, Extreme Speed does insane damage. Like, that is crazy. Um, this thing's F. Dustox is F. Raichu, uh, I'm gonna say B tier. Fake out, Nuzzle, Thunderbolt, it's, it's always gonna be good. Raichu's always gonna be amazing. is also gonna be going into high tier. It's just, you know, it's about on par with Kingdra when it comes to rain stuff. Shiftry is gonna be D, it's just, eh. Loses hard to pretty much 90% of the format, but it's got good tools. Uh, Swellow is gonna be F. Pelipper, that's high tier. Tailwind, Scald, etc. It's it's got everything it needs. Gardevoir is gonna be D tier. It just doesn't do anything the best. Masquerade's D tier. It's got Intimidate. Hits kind of hard with Bug Buzz if you specs it or Life Orbit. It needs Quiver Dance really, but it's you know it's whatever. Breloom. This thing is top tier. I accidentally dropped it in in D tier, but it is top tier, hundred percent. Uh. It, you know, it's able to hard check Tyranitar. You're able to run like sub toxic orb. I've been messing around with that and that's been nasty. If you, when you're using a Breloom, people want to deal with it. They'll, they'll want to like protect, deal with it. If you are able to call the protect and get off a sub, all of a sudden it's like, okay, cool. Can't intimidate me and you can't flinch me. And I'm going to put at least two things to sleep. It loses hard to Togekiss. Hates Togekiss. 
Garchomp can one-shot it with a poison jab. But beyond that, this thing is nasty. Like, <laughs> like put anything you want to sleep. But yeah, look, like, it's... You have to run, like, Sash to reliably put things to sleep. I would say, like, the Sash set is the most reliable, but if you want to run, like, Toxic Orb sub, that's also really nasty. It's just, it takes a little bit more effort, you know? <laughs> um... Slacking. Uh, slacking is... I think slacking... It needs... It needs wheezing. I want to say slacking wheezing is actually kind of high tier. It's not C tier. It's definitely not. It'd be like top of C tier, in my opinion. It's better than all these. I'm going to put it bottom of high tier. I'm going to put wheezing next to it just so people know. Like, yeah, that's why it's there. But... Psyching Weezing is really fun. It's a really nasty combo. People know what's coming towards them. Obviously, it's not as good as Regigigas Weezing is when Dynamax is available. But, you know, without Dynamax, this thing still hits pretty hard. And it's it's a really fun Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, Sand Slash, you're D tier. Mainly because you're the only Sand Rush user. Ninjask. Yeah, it's F. It's F. Shedinja, it's F unless it's restricted format. Uh, Exploud, F. Hariyama. Ariyama, I think, is actually pretty high tier. Ariyama's got a lot of cool tools. If you look at it, uh, Guts is really nasty. Go ahead and run a Flame Orb on it. And it's like just good next to Cresselia. You got Fake Out, you got Close Combat, you get Knock Off. It's got so many cool tools, and it's actually just a really great Pokemon. So yeah, uh, Ariyama, very, very high tier. Like 144 HP, 120 attack with 60 defenses. That's pretty good. You know, obviously it doesn't like taking hits, but it can. The HP lets it take those hits if it needs to. <coughs> uh, Delcaddy. That's F. It literally doesn't do anything in any format ever. Sableye. Um, I think Sableye's high tier. Fake out, Prankster, Taunt. Like, it's it's one of few Prankster Pokemon in the game. And it's it's really, really good. Uh, Mawile, that is F. I'm sorry. Agron. Um... I want to say D because it's not as bad as these guys. Metacham, C, you know, you could use it. This thing's pretty low tier. It get, does it get lightning rod? It does. Uh, it could be, it could be C, but I want to put it in D. It just it doesn't do anything reliably. Plus on Minun, both low tier. This thing's F. This thing's F. Like they they're prankster Pokemon, but they don't get anything really good with it. Swalot's F. It doesn't do anything ever. Uh, Sharpedo's probably D. Speed Boost is pretty good. Uh, Needle Queen C for sure. Life Orb, Sheer Force, Ice Beam coverage stuff. Like, that's nasty. Uh, Whale Lord is gonna be F. Camera Up, I'm gonna put in D. I think Trick Room Camera Up is kind of underexplored. Torco hits harder, but Camera Up's fun for, like, extra powerful Earth Power stuff. Uh, Torco is 100% high tier. I don't think it's as dominant as it would be in formats where Venusaur can Dynamax, but I would say Torkoal is still very good. Like, you, you still see it, right? Where's Torkoal in usage? 5% usage, so it's like... Yeah, it's it's still high tier. It's still it's still high tier. I don't, I don't want to say top tier, mainly because, you know, it doesn't hit too hard, and Rain's still really good, so... Yeah, it hits hard, right? Like, Eruption does a lot of damage, but it's not as hard as it would be if, like, you know, most teams didn't have a rain setter. Uh, Grumpig is F, Spind is F. Flygon is C, you could probably get away with it, but it's probably, like, top of D. Cacturn's F. This thing, I actually see kind of getting a little bit of usage once in a while if rain becomes too good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in D. Zangoose, D. It's a Viper, F, it doesn't do anything. These guys are as mediocre as Pokemon come. Whizcash as well. Cronon actually has some pretty decent damage output. I actually want to put him in C. I think he could be kind of okay as like a Sash knockoff user. Um, especially with Cresselia running around, that's pretty nice. Claydol, uh, that's a D. Trick Room, Earth Power. It's just, it's just like a coverage Pokemon. Um, Cradley, D. Nidoking. C. Same as like Needle Queen. Uh, Armaldo is going to be in D. It gets Swift Swim, but it's arguably F because it just is Intimidate food and doesn't hit anything really hard. Milotic, I'm going to go ahead and put in high tier. It's really great for stopping Intimidate Pokemon. Uh, 
It's also just insane because of competitive. Uh, it has access to coil hypnosis still. There aren't any breakers, so if you want to set up with a really defensive Milotic, then, you know, be my guest. Uh, if we actually look at this team, where is it? Uh, this is something that I've been playing with, and I'm actually really tempted to drop Protect for Hypnosis since I'm running Coil anyways. This is really annoying to deal with. It's really bulky, it takes hits really well. It's just a great Pokemon. It, it's probably the best water type that isn't a Swift Swim user, so. Uh, you're D tier. You're like C tier because you have Fake Out. <laughs> uh, these guys are F. I think you can... Yeah, no. Dusclops doesn't do anything anymore because it doesn't have UV Light. Tropius is F. You're F. Absol is D. You can get away with it if you have like a Sash, but it's not great. Fairy is F because we lost access to UV Light, which is really annoying. Uh, Glalie is F. Eh, we'll go D. Moody's kind of busted. Walrein is D. It's bulky enough. You could use like Ice Beam... Not Scald, but like Surf or whatever, and it's probably going to have decent damage output. Uh, these guys get Shell Smash, so they just belong in D. Like, they can work. The Fable, it's C. It's a pretty good redirector. Relicanth is F. Love Disc is F. Salamence, uh, this is going to be t uh, this is gonna be high tier. It's Salamence. It does really good. It's got Intimidate. It's pretty fast. Metagross, uh, it's high tier. It's, it's definitely high tier. It, you know, it's Intimidate Immune... It doesn't like Garchomp, but it does get access to like coverage moves like Ice Punch and stuff. So, actually, does it get Ice Punch or is that strictly TM? Oh, it doesn't. It gets no ice coverage. All right. Um, I think it's still. I think it's still high tier. Like it's 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 Metagross. It's always gonna be good. Oh, uh, do 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 do. Reggie Rock. I. Reggie Rock's iffy. I think C works. Um, it still gets like weakness policy stuff, and it still gets curse. So it's oh wait no weakness policy doesn't exist. Weakness policy doesn't exist. Is Reggie Rocks is it D? Let me take a look. Um, I I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to say it's D. You could get away with it. You know, it's got good stats, but it's it's not great. This thing, like, lived and breathed um, weakness policy, and now it's lost it, so it, like, just doesn't do anything. Which is, you know, disappointing for Regirock fans. Uh, I was not one of them, though, so... <laughs> so I'm still fine. <clears throat> Reggie Ice, Yeah, that's F. Reggie Steel. It's, it's the same as Regirock, it just doesn't do much. Uh, Latios is going to be like C tier. However, Latios, I've seen a lot. Uh, it's definitely high tier, like Draco Meteor Tailwind stuff, like that's, it does nasty damage. Um, the reason Latios is in C tier compared to it is because there's like no reason to run Latios over it when you're going for, when you're going for damage. Uh, oh, I accidentally replaced my Breloom. <laughs> Whoops, uh, I'll fix that in a minute. But yeah, uh, when you're comparing Latios and Latios, Latios has 130 base special attack and 110 speed. Latios only has 110. It's bulkier, but you're mainly going for damage. So it's like, you know, just run Latios. These guys aren't legal. These guys aren't legal. Torterra. F. <laughs> I mean, you could probably make a case for D. It's like, it's got good coverage in terms of like, you know, stab moves. Um, but it's just kind of, you don't want to switch it on a nice move. It doesn't have a lot of resistances. You could get away with it. I'm, that's why it's it's D. You can get away with it. Nine Tails, by virtue of being a Sunsetter, it's uh, C. But beyond that, it's very very eh. Infernape, it's it's high tier in my opinion. The reason it's high tier is just because of the tools it has. It's it's very min maxed. It's an offensive fake out using fighting fire type. When you're min maxed the way that this thing is, it's hard not to be pretty good. Uh, I think it's I think it's good, you know. I, I don't think it's broken. Uh, I've seen it get intimidate spam to hell by Gyarados and lost. Uh, but you know, when you're just looking at the tools it has, you you can't deny it's very easy to get away with using a 108 speed Pokemon with access to fake out, flare blitz, uh, close combat. Like it's it's just good. It's just good. Yeah, like I can't I can't put it any other way. It also gets U-turn, so it's it's a good Pokemon. 
I definitely think it's high tier. Next up, Empoleon. This is a hot take. I think Empoleon is also high tier. Here's why. Empoleon functions similar to similarly to Milotic because it really is it's it's really really good for staving off uh, Intimidate because of its ability Defiant. However, Empoleon is also a water steel typing, one of the best defensive typings in the game. It doesn't like facing Garchomp, but it doesn't mind facing a lot of other top tier Pokemon. Here's what I'm gonna, here's here's what I'm talking about, right? Togekiss. You have to run Me Metal Claw as like is is like a, a weird okay, I don't get any other steel moves sort of thing. Like, yeah, you know, run... Oh, wait, uh, Steel Wing, my bad. You have to run Steel Wing. It's, it's really weak, but it's fine, you know? Um, but you're running Defiant, right? So if you're running, like, a physical set, you're pretty bulky. You can do that, right? Uh, you're running Steel Wing, you're running Waterfall. Honestly, you can run, like, Drill Pack and Protect. Does it get any other moves beyond drill pack that are actually pretty good um it gets rock slide you know it also gets yawn which is kind of crazy i didn't know that but it's as far as like offensive moves it goes you're gonna you're gonna run this right and that covers pretty well beyond garchomp you're doing pretty good focus you know you just hit it with a with a steel move Roselia, it's it's whatever tyranitar you hard beat that rotom wash you know you don't want to touch it scissor pretty even heatran you win that uh, Breloom, you lose that. Arcanine, you definitely win that. Hitmontop, you don't always win it, but it definitely doesn't like taking a plus one drill pack. Azumarill, you beat that. Latios, you wall that. It's, it's reliable. It's just, it's weirdly reliable. That's weird. Like, I, I'm not gonna say it's, like, the best Pokemon ever, but it's higher than, like, mid-tier. I think it's, I think it's reliable. I think, like, you can make it work if someone you know, put the time into it, they can make a very, like, usable core of Pokemon with Empoleon on it. Um, Star Raptor, it's C tier. Uh, it could, you could say high tier, but I, I think Star Raptor belongs in C tier, um, because of its, like, it's, it's just like, how do I say it? It's not that bulky. It relies on Intimidate to be bulky, and it has Intimidate, and it has, like, really nice moves, like Brave Bird and Close Combat. But, I feel like in this format, with Rotom Wash everywhere, and Tyranitar everywhere, they're gonna know you're running Close Combat, and they're gonna just, like, follow me in a way. Like, it's, this Pokemon, the set that it runs is very predictable. Yeah, you could run Reckless. Reckless could be good. Um, this is interesting. It might be high tier. I, I might put it in high tier. I think, uh, I have to look at this. Let me compare to other flying types. Togekiss is going to be the best fight, flying type, hands down. Um, you know what? I'll put it high tier. I'll put it high tier. I, I, I think it, it needs to be explored. But I think it's it's probably gonna be okay. Uh Venusaur, that's high tier. Sleep powder, sludge bomb, leaf storm. Venusaur does Venusaur things when the sun's up. That's pretty much all it is. Your F. Your F. Luxray is like I'm gonna say C. It's an intimidate user. It's a pretty good electric type. That's pretty much it though. Like it's it's you can get away with it, which is why it's going to be in C. Roserade? I actually think Roserade's pretty good. I might put it high tier. Um, I'm going to put it high tier. Roserade's kind of nasty. So, if we look at it, it's got a really good special attack stat at 125 and a really good speed stat at 90. It gets Sleep Powder. It gets Sludge Bomb. It gets uh, Leaf Storm. I think it gets Weather Ball. It doesn't, no. But it's just like a solid Pokemon overall. If you want, like, a more offensive Venusaur that doesn't rely on Sun, this isn't a terrible choice. So, yeah, I think it's high tier. Rampardos, uh, it's it's D because it hits really hard, but if it didn't hit very hard, it'd be, it'd be F. Wigglytuff, I think you could make a case for it. <laughs> Competitive Wigglytuff is actually kind of a monster. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in C. Like, a low C. I think, I think it's, like, low C. 
Bastiodon, that's F. It doesn't, it literally just doesn't do anything. It sits in the field and does nothing. Same with Wormadam. Mothum, the same. Uh, this is also the same. Pachirisu, you gotta respect it. It's C. We know that you could make it reliable if you tried. It's got Follow Me, it's got Nuzzle, it's got a lot of cool tools, it's got great special bulk. It's good. This thing, probably D. This thing is going to be D. It's only really good on Sun teams, and that's by design. Um, yeah, like, I, I think it's literally just, like, going to be a Sun spam Pokemon. It's nice next to, like, Torkoal Entei, because you get, like, that extra boost on your Entei, which is really nasty. Um, however, it's still kind of underexplored. I could see it being pretty good, though. All right, we're nearing the bottom. Gastrodon. I... You know what? It's always been a debate as to whether or not Gastrodon is good in any given format, but I think this is the one format we've had in many, many years where I can undeniably say Gastrodon is kind of bad. That being said, Rain still exists, so by that virtue, it's going to be C. It just... There are better water types. There are good grass types. Breloom is everywhere. Uh, Ludicolo is being used like it's it's just there are so many things that it doesn't do well in this format but it still just exists it's it's a storm dream Pokemon it's a check to rain so it has to be C Ambipom I think you can get away with Ambipom it's C fake out you know stab fake out at that with technician Drift Blim it's C uh, actually does get tailwind that, that's the deciding factor here again yeah that's C Let's see. Unburdened Tailwind stuff. Like, that's... Let's see. Um... Lopany, that's F. Miss Magus, that's C. You can get away with it. It's just, like, a good ghost type. It's not great. It's got good speed, but it, it's, like, a good ghost type. Like, literally just emphasis on good. You know? Nothing better. Golbat, uh, no Eevee Light. Straight to F. Honchkrow is surprisingly viable. I'm going to put it in mid-tier. Um, here's why. So, in previous formats, Honchkrow has just been nated on by, like, everything. However, it seems like Sash Honchkrow is being used as, like, a Tailwind setter. And yeah, like, Murkrow is better as a Tailwind setter. However, this thing kind of, like, slaps. It has such good damage output. Uh, it lost access to superpower, but it still has good moves. It still gets, like, Brave Bird. It still gets Sucker Punch. It still gets Night Slash. It, it, there's, there's something going for it. It might be a good Cresselia counter in you know, late format, once we develop this a little bit more, but it, it's good. It's good. It's just not amazing. Brugly is a defiant user. It's C. It gets fake out. Skun tank. Uh, D, it's hard to justify using it when other dark types exist. It doesn't get much from poison. Bronzong, this thing is 100% top tier in my opinion. It is probably the best trick room setter that we have. Um, it's... Well, actually, Cresselia exists, which is, like, a better Trick Room Setter, but as far as, like, slow Trick Room Setters go, it's it's one of the best. It's one of our best Steel types. It's able to tank hits from, like, everything. I think it's definitely top tier. Uh, Chatot, that's F. However, it's still fun, so maybe D. This thing's D. Uh, it doesn't like Togekiss. It, it just doesn't like Fairy types. Um, it lost access to cool moves like Burning Jealousy, so it's really just gonna be, like, Snarl Spam. Garchomp, this is a top tier. Garchomp is nasty in this format. Its main predator is Togekiss and Ice Beam Cresselia, but beyond that, it's really reliable. Uh, Swords Dance, Earthquake, it does whatever it needs to do. Wherever there is a Garchomp, there's a way, in my opinion. That's how this format works. Like It's, it's just such a good, strong Pokemon to use. Um, yeah, it loses hard to Ice types, but there aren't that many good ice types in this format and it's usually seen with redirection and a steel type at its side so it's fine munchlax uh f there's no eviolite lucario it's it's c you can get away with it you know it's, it's like a good steel fighting type uh hippowdon i think i think hippowdon's gonna be high tier it's got yawn it's got earthquake we haven't explored sand much in this format because we don't have excadrill but we might see Hippowdon be used in a couple of teams, so, yeah. Drapion, it's another you-can-get-away-with-it Pokemon. Uh, Toxicroak, I'm gonna put it in C. It could be high tier, um, because it's, you know, it's got Fighting Stab, it's got Poison for beating Togekiss, but its speed just isn't there. It's, it's, it, it just doesn't have the speed it needs. 
It's it's got better speed. It's 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 at a better speed tier in this game than it was in Sword and Shield because everything is slower in this game. But yeah, I I you know what? I'll put him high tier. He's better than everything in here. He's high tier. Uh, Carnivine is F. Luminion's F. This thing you can get away with it, but not reliably. It's gonna be like D. Uh, Obama Snow, I it's the only hail setter. C, you can get away with it. Weavile, uh, I'm gonna put this thing in um, B tier. It's a really nice check for beating Garchomp. Uh, it's got Fake Out. Does it get Triple Axel still, or did or did it not get that as like an egg move in this game? I think Triple Axel is exclusively, yeah. It still gets like good ice moves though, so I'm gonna put it there. Uh, Mammoth Swine's also gonna be up there. I think Mammoth Swine's better. Actually, I might put this thing at like C. I might put it at C mainly just because. Eh, you know, it's it's pretty good. It, it beats a lot of top tiers. It just itself is not a top tier. Magnazone as an electric type. Uh, I'm going to put it C. It's got good damage output. There are definitely better electric types, but it's fine. Licky Licky, it's it's D. It, it's only good for like anti-weather. I think Rhyperior is underexplored. Um, I'm going to put it at C. It doesn't like Milotic, it doesn't like any grass types, but it, Rhyperior always sends to find a way in formats. Tangrowth? Uh, Nino, thank you so much for the raid. We're just uh, ranking some Pokemon here. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? But yeah, um, so far the tier list is kind of interesting. It, it's kind of interesting. We haven't gotten to Togekiss yet. We already know where Togekiss is going to end up. Um, but Tangrowth here... It's, it's another Pokemon that you can just kind of get away with it. It's got Rage Powder. It's got cool tools. I believe it has access to Knock Off and like Giga Drain and stuff. So it's it's a Pokemon that isn't strictly reliable, but you can make it work. And that's why it belongs in C tier. It's just fine. Um, Electivire. That's another one of those, hey, you can make it work Pokemon. Going to take a bit of effort, but there are better Electro types. Like, you know, Zapdos and, Ra and Raichu exist. So kind of hard to justify using it. Magmortar, these guys are just like the trio of mediocrity. They are literally the trio of mediocrity. They will work, but they're not great. And our first S tier. So here's the thing with Toekiss. It has like no natural predators in this game. <laughs> if we look at like usage stats, uh, there are only a few Pokemon that reliably beat it. Uh, Tyranitar, it's, it, I, I'd say it goes even with it. Um, yes, it can crit it with Dazzling Gleam, but with Sand Up, it takes the hit pretty well. And then you stone edge it back, and you might one-shot it, depending on the spread. Uh, Rotom Wash is able to beat it pretty reliably, but if you're able to get crit by Dazzling Gleam twice, it's not going to be good for you. Scizor is amazing for beating it. It's one of the few Pokemon that hard walls it. Heatran is one of the, of the few Pokemon that hard walls it. Uh, everything else visible on this list is just food for it. Bronzong's great for beating it with Gyro Ball, but it's so good. It has access to like, every tool it needs in this game. It still has Yawn, it still has Dazzling Gleam. You can still run Serene Grace if you want to, but Crit is going to be so much better. Yeah, Crit Kiss is nasty. Uh, Yawn Mega. Another, you can get away with it if you want Pokemon. However, in doubles, Rock Slide is really, really good, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, you're just going to get one shot by that if you're not careful. This thing is D. It's got a good attack stat. It's got good defense, but it's just... It's very, very mediocre. Same with Glaceon. Um, Gliscor, I'm going to go ahead and put it in C. It doesn't like Ice Moves. It doesn't like Cresselia. However, it's still just a good Pokemon as far as ground types go. It hard walls. Um, it's able to hard wall things like Garchomp. Uh, other top tiers at hard walls. It, you know, is able to deal with Tyranitar. Uh, everything here seems to deal with it, though. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, no, I, think, I think it's like C. I think it's C, yeah. It, it's... It's hard to justify using a Pokemon like this in doubles when, like, Priscilla is running around with Ice Beam all the time because it's able to just two-shot it. Mamoswine, I think, is heavily underused right now. I'm going to put it in high tier. Uh, it's immune to Intimidate now. It is able to click the most vicious Icicle Crash you have ever seen. It gets access to Ice Spear, or not Ice Spear, uh, Ice Shard uh, for priority. It's good. It's, it's such a good Pokemon, and I haven't seen it used that much. Where is it in usage? Where is it in usage? Like, I haven't seen it once on the ladder. Why is this thing only at 6%? It, it's, it deserves, like, at least a 9 or 10. 
Yeah, if Infernape's at 8, Mamoswine should be well above 8. It's good. It's such a good Pokemon. Um, Porygon-Z. I think Porygon-Z is going to be a tier. Uh, we don't have very many breakers in this format, but Porygon-Z is one of them. Adaptability Hyper Beam goes crazy. It still gets Nasty Plot. Uh, it still has great coverage moves. I think Porygon-Z is definitely a high tier. Gallade. That's another mediocre. You can get away with it. Probopass, that's F. Like, what do you even do? Uh, Dusknoir, I'm actually going to go ahead and say it's C. Dusclops is currently um, unemployed because Eviolite's gone. So this thing is going to take over as far as Ghost-type Trick Room Setters go. Um, it has the same tools. It just doesn't use them as well. Frostlass, it's going to be another C. Good Ice-type, you know. I think Rotom Heat is actually pretty high tier. There are a couple of good fire types in this format. We have access to, you know, we have Infernape, we have Rotom Heat, we have Torkoal, but Rotom Heat is the only one of them that takes a hit really well and is able to set up with that free turn. Uh, it's also a really nice answer to grass types in the format. So yeah, I think Rotom Heat is great. It's also another hard wall for Togekiss. So Rotom Wash, it's going to be like right next to that thing. It's just, it's like the same concept, but with a water type. This guy's D. It's Rotom Ice has always been frustrating for me. This guy's even more frustrating. His ability doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say Rotom Mo. It has too much competition from other grass types, so it's gonna be like C here. Uh, but it's still like a really solid Pokemon, and I, I have a couple of teams with it. This thing's F. Parasect is surprisingly good. Um, I'm gonna put it at like I want to put it high tier. I really do. However, it's still gonna be like C just because of that awful typing. But it's, it's one of the few, like, good Trick Room sleepers. It has Rage Powder still. It's got Redirection. But that typing breaks it down so much that I, I can't put it in the high tier. Yuxi, um, probably D. Doesn't do too much. Mesprit is also going to be D. And I'm going to go ahead and put Azelf in C just because it has good offenses. It's just, you know, it's not the best, but it's it's fine. Heatran, that is a top tier Where'd I drop that? I, I dropped my Heatran. Where'd he go? Guys, I, I lost my Heatran. Have you seen him? Where'd you go? He's in this tier list somewhere. I dropped him by accident. <laughs> it's like losing a contact, but I just lost a whole Pokemon. Where are you? I gotta find this Heatran. I'm gonna lose my mind. He's in D tier. Uh... I'm blind, dude. I'm not, I'm not able to see this thing. Next to Tauros. He's here next to Tauros. Oh, there he is. He, was, uh, he just blends in. He just blends in. Hiding in plain sight. Yeah, this thing's top tier. Uh, Shookaberry is kind of necessary since Air Balloon doesn't exist. Uh, but, you know, with Cresselia next to it, it's able to trick room. It's able to go for Heat Wave. If you have a Tailwind Setter on your team or any kind of speed control, it's at a speed tier where it can be either slow or fast. It's got amazing typing, and it's a natural predator for Togekiss, so yeah, it's great. Uh, Regigigas. I would say Regigigas is outclassed by slacking, but I think it's still underexplored. I think these guys are high tier. I've been using them a lot. They're very fun, and I think that people aren't giving them enough of a chance right now. Like, I've been able to win games pretty consistently with these three. I think they're high tier. But, like, if anything, I, these aren't ranked in order, but they'd be, like, bottom of high tier. Um, yeah, but it needs wheezing to work, obviously. And our second S tier, Cresselia is busted. It's, it's, it's not busted in the same way Incineroar was busted. And that's because Incineroar had so many tools at its disposal that it was like just viable on every single team. Cresselia has limited tools, but it has the right tools. Um, there are no breakers in the format that outright one shot it beyond a choice band Crawdont. But... Yeah, it's just it's just nasty. You just max out your you max out your physical defense, and you're able to like set up Calm Mind Ice Beam, and like run like leftovers of Moonlight or whatever. Or if you want to, you can run like a, a Lumberry to make sure you don't get slept, and you want to like reliably set up Trick Room. They, these pretty much always run like the same set with only a few differences. Like some might run Psychic, some might run Ice Beam, some might run both. But genuinely, generally speaking, Cresselia is hard to beat. Like it doesn't deal that much damage, but 
it, it's weird because like the main way that you would deal with something like this is ignore it for a while and KO everything around it. But you can't really ignore Cresselia because if it gets a couple of calm mines up, then it starts actually dealing damage. Uh, and that's when you have to get concerned. So it's a really hard thing to like micromanage within the game. Next up, uh, all these are illegal. Venomoth's like, <laughs> I think Venomoth's fine. It's a Rage Powder user, it's D, it's not able to be flinched, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Doug Trio's like F, it just doesn't do anything. This thing, probably D, just by virtue of fast fake out. Golduck, it's a Swift Swim user, I'll put it in D. Primeape is actually kind of cool because it has Defiant. I think you get away with it, but it's it's more likely in D, it's not, it's not as easy to build around. Arcanine, I would say, is a top tier. Eh, he's high tier, he's high tier, he's not top tier. The reason Arcanine isn't top tier is just because it it doesn't like facing off against a lot of the powerful Pokemon in the format. Um, it gets walled by Heatran. It gets annihilated by Garchomp, even if it's at minus one. Um, Suicune is able to just wall it out. Azumarill annihilates it. Gyarados is amazing versus it. It's just a good intimidator and it has access to like will-o-wisp and snarl and it's, it's just like a, a nice tool it's a very very good tool so it's definitely high tier it's not it's not top tier though um something to note is i don't think this tier list has murkrow on it because if I, I was gonna put murkrow in high tier something to note yeah if if if, if there was a murkrow on this list it would definitely be high tier uh, next up is Poliwhirl, Swift Swim user, you can probably get away with it, C tier. Alakazam, it's it's another C tier. You know, I've seen like Focus Sash, Trick Room Alakazam work before, um, as well as Fast Alakazam, like it's it's all fine. Machamp is gonna be, I wanna say D tier. I, I really want Machamp to be good, but it just, it falls short every time I try to use it, and it's just, eh. Charizard's gonna be a C tier. Uh, 100 speed is an amazing speed tier for this game, because... Everything just got slower. And if you end up running like a Charizard with Solar Power Life Orb, it deals a lot of damage with a Heat Wave. Uh, I think it's underexplored right now. Not a lot of people are opting for Sun as, you know, with Charizard on it. If you're running Sun, it's pretty much just going to be like Torkoal, Venusaur as an option. But if you put Charizard on there, it actually does deal pretty good damage. So C tier it goes. Next up, uh, Victory Bell. I think Victory Bell is a sleeper pick. I think it's pretty good. It gets access to Weather Ball. It's like a slightly worse Venusaur with better coverage because of that. And it also has access to like tools like knockoff and stuff. So I think I think C tier is pretty good. Is this singles or doubles? Uh, this is doubles. All right. Um, Tentacruel. I think it's D. It doesn't do much in doubles. Uh, I don't think it gets Icy Wind anymore. It's really just like a wall for Togekiss, and that's all it does. Yeah. Uh, you could put it in C, I suppose. I think you can get away with it. Golem, it's it's D. It's just going to be like Rock Polish, Rock Slide, or something like that. Actually, it might even be F. It doesn't do anything, really, because there's no weakness policy. It really needed weakness policy to be good. Uh, Rapidash is another F. It's a very lame fire type. It doesn't hit hard at all. Uh, it also doesn't take hits well. Slowbro, I'm going to go ahead and put that in C. It's actually a pretty decent Trick Room Pokemon. It's pretty good versus Garchomp and Togekiss. It's all right, you know, pretty good. Magneton, I actually think this is probably D tier. Magnezone exists. Magneton is faster, but there's no Eviolite, so it's like, whatever. Dodrio, that's F. Dugong, gets Fake Out, still F though. Muck, probably like D, by virtue of like limited poison Pokemon. This thing still gets Shell Smash. I still get Nanate on it once in a while. Um, it's, it's gonna be C. Gengar is actually pretty good. I consider Gengar um, a high tier. Uh, it has access to Parasong, it has access to Nasty Plot. It's one of the few Pokemon that can reliably beat Cresselia because of that. So, yeah, I, I think that it's, it's, it's B tier. Kingler, definitely a D tier Pokemon. And Blastoise and Hypmon, and Hypno. Hypno's F, it just doesn't do anything. Blastoise, I can pretty safely put in I'm going to say D tier. It gets cool tools. It gets like fake out. It gets shell smash. It gets uh, water spout. But it's it's not the best. So um, S tier. Like I guess the tiers that matter most. We'll cover those real quick. 
So S tier is going to be Toekiss, Cresselia. Very hard to find something better than those in the format. Uh, they do their job pretty much better than anything else, and they're just great. Top tier, uh, I think Gyarados is amazing. Great Pokemon for like Dragon Dance setup. It also has Intimidate. Uh, Azumarill, Belly Drum stuff is crazy. Smeargle is only not S tier. Put it at top. Uh, Smeargle is only not S tier because of Moody. You live and you die by it. Could bite you in the butt. Could be incredible. So yeah. Uh, it's also very linear. Like you always know what Smeargle is going to do. Despite it having the biggest move pool in the game. It's one of the most linear Pokemon ever made. Uh, we have Suicune as one of the most reliable Tailwind setters in the game. Besides Murkrow. Even though Murkrow isn't on this list for some reason. Uh, has access to Scald, Inner Focus, can't be flinched. Very bulky. Tyranitar. Best rock type, sand. One of the best breakers for Cresselia. Breloom is able to sleep things, and it's also pretty decent in grass and fighting type, so. It's also just nasty. Like, if you get Breloom behind a sub or next to a tailwind, it's it's just gonna do so much work. Bronzong is arguably our best trick room setter, not including Cresselia. It has access to like hypnosis and is able to hard wall um, both Garchomp and Tokus, so that's amazing. Garchomp is just Swords Dance the movie, Scarf the movie, Life Orb the movie. It's, it's able to do all those things. You know, it, it's just such a reliable Pokemon. It's hard not to bring it to like every match. Um, Heatran is one of our best fire types, has access to a lot of uh, nice coverage and like Dark Pulse and Earth Power. But for the most part, it's just gonna be used for like Heat Wave and uh, Flash Cannon. But on top of that, it also has Taunt. So that's like a really useful tool for stopping Trick Room. So I think it's just really nice. B tier is our high tier. I'm not going to cover anything below it, but just going over it real quick why I put these things in B tier because these are like my more controversial Pokemon. Um, sorry, my mouth's getting dry. So, Kangaskhan, Inner Focus, Fake Out, Double Edge, not able to be intimidated. Actually, really cool, really useful. It has a lot of great tools like Roar. It also has Safeguard, which I've been using a lot to counter Smeargle, and that's really nice. Uh, Snorlax is just Belly Drum stuff. Zapdos, kind of nerfed since it doesn't get fire coverage anymore or Hurricane, but it's still Zapdos. It's still bulky and able to like go for Thunder and Discharge and stuff. Moltres, I think, is one of our better fire types, especially if you're running a rain team, because uh, it does get access to Hurricane, and it hits pretty hard. Dragonite, not able to be intimidated because of Inner Focus. Uh, Multi-skill's great. Crobat, reliable Tailwind, no Fake Out, no Intimidate. Uh, Politoed, Drizzle Setter. Hypnosis, uh, Scald, other cool moves, I suppose. No Helping Hand, though, which kind of sucks. Umbreon walls everything since there are no breakers, and it has Snarl. Um, Scizor is Scizor, Swords Dance, whatever. Hitmontop is Hitmontop. Fake Out, Intimidate, Wide Guard, great tools. Kingdra is a great rain abuser. Raikou and Entei, not flinchable. Probably one of the better electric types. Uh, Entei is definitely one of the better fire types with like Choice Band, Sacred Fire. Uh, Raichu is really nice next to Gyarados and stuff. Uh, it's able to nuzzle, it's able to fake out. It's a lot of great tools. Sorry, I had to cough. Um, Ludicolo, great rain abuser. Pelipper, rain setter, tailwind setter. Ariyama, really, really reliable Pokemon. Fake out, great bulk, close combat. It's all really nice. It also has knockoff. Uh, Sableye is just a nasty prankster Pokemon. Torkoal, our best sunsetter, our only sunsetter. <laughs> uh, access to eruption, great in your trick room. Milotic, amazing for stopping intimidate Pokemon. Very, very useful in this format for uh, beating Garchomp if you manage to get a couple of coils up. Salamence is just a great intimidator Pokemon. It's also, you know, Salamence. Good damage output, good speed. Metagross is just a reliable seal type. Not much coverage now that it lost access to like Ice Punch and stuff, but it's still really nice. Latios has great damage output with Draco Meteor and access to Tailwind. Um, Infernape has amazing tools. It's very min-maxed. It's got fake out. It's got good coverage. Good damage output too. Empoleon is one of my more controversial picks. I think Defiant is going to be huge for it. Uh, I think the fact that it's able to wall out... Um, Pokemon like uh, Tyranitar, uh, Azumarill, Gyarados, and Tokus are, I think that's like a really important feature to it. And it's also good for stopping Intimidate. So yeah, it, it's, it's, I think it's going to be explored more and probably used a bit more towards the end of the format when things get bulky. 
Star Raptor, just good damage output and access to Intimidate. Uh, Venusaur, reliable sleep Pokemon. Same with um, Roserade, but Roserade has better damage output and Venusaur is faster with Sun Up. Uh, Hippowdon is just a really bulky ground type with access to Sand. Uh, Toxicroak, good tools, good poison type. Probably able to beat Togekiss if you get lucky. Uh, Weavile beats a lot of top tiers 1v1. However, it's not as reliable as top tiers. Got, it's got Fake Out. It's got really, really great um, ice moves. Uh, like, obviously, Ice Skull Spear or um, Ice Skull Crash are going to be amazing with damage output. And it's just a really fast Pokemon. Uh, Mamoswine, I forgot its name for a minute. Mamoswine, amazing damage output, can't be intimidated. I think it's really slept on right now, but it's probably going to make it into top tier by the end of the format. Porygon Z, our only extremely powerful breaker. Uh, it's just strong. Yeah, it's just good. The Rotom Forms are just bulky special attackers that are really reliable. These three, the, uh, the Weezing Trio, I think they're high tier just because of their damage output. Weezing has also got really nice tools like uh, like Will-O-Wisp and Taunt. Arcanine's a reliable Intimidate setter. Also a very good Pokemon to support the rest of the team with Snarl and Will-O-Wisp. And Gengar is just a really powerful uh, Ghost-type Pokemon with access to Nasty Plot and a couple of other coverage moves. So yeah, uh, I think overall, this is a really interesting format. Obviously, this is all early game metagame special, uh, speculation. I can't speak. Early metagame speculation. Uh, however... You know, we're just going to have to see where the format takes us. So yeah, uh, that's it for the tier list. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, sorry I am so sick right now. Hopefully it isn't too annoying. <laughs>